guys. Nice targeted citizen here. Long time no talk. And I have thoroughly enjoyed not talking. Or I could rephrase that. I haven't enjoyed not talking, but I've enjoyed not being relentlessly mocked. That's been a pleasure, not to be mocked. A lot of things have changed. A lot of things have stayed the same. I initially went silent because I was just tired. And then everything just started looking up. It's like, oh, must like my targeting had just stopped. Because, you know, there's people out there who say, yeah, I don't, I can't believe I fed into it. And and it was all in my head. And, and the targeting just stopped when I got, quit thinking about it. Well, that sounds great. And I thought that, too. All my targeting lessened. It wasn't obvious in your face, but woe to me did I know that when it's not flattening your tires or blowing your cars up or stealing your stuff, they change up. And there's the drone if you can't see it right there in front of you. Right that that drone right there, yeah. So they change it up. At the moment, what you can't see. It's hunting season. Every hunting season, somehow, some way, I always end up with a big sty in my eye. Well, this hunting season, I got a sty on my eye, and my right eye, not my dominant eye, not the one I use when I'm looking in a scope, my right eye is almost swollen shut. Also, where they fried me so much with directed energy weapons, I told you about that. Um, now, I think I showed you the, the pictures of it where I lost five of my teeth a couple years ago where the roots just were burnt. The doctors thought that I had I, I was undergoing chemotherapy because the roots of my teeth were burnt. The teeth were perfect. No cavities, no nothing. Well, I'm going through that again where I've got the two back teeth in my on my right side of my mouth is just on fire. Um, where they're frying me. Um, they're working extra hard on my body. Uh, the psychological manipulation is through the absolute roof. Paranoia, anxiousness, overthinking constantly. Um, just dread, down low, depressed. It's just, they've just crushed me. And I've had some pretty traumatic thing going on but I said well you know what since it's not obvious and overt as it was I was like man I'll just shut up because maybe it's going to stop because that losing part of this programming and this torture program is great any less of its full potential is better than nothing better than, better than anything I'm trying to focus on my, my I can't hardly and they try to wreck me all the time by trying to put me to sleep while I'm driving. They put me to sleep in a deer stand. They put me to sleep when I'm driving. They can instantly they put me to sleep in no time flat. There's the drone still right in the middle of the road. It was to the north. Now it's to the northeast. So I... I, 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 I um, Na naively thought, oh, it'll stop. I'd just be quiet. Look, it's stopping. No, it didn't stop. They have started manipulating the people around me worse than ever. My relationship is just pretty much nothing now. I used to count the paragraphs that my mate would say to me, and now I can count the words that she says to me on a daily basis. The words. Like by the sentences, which is crazy. I, I just every relationship I've ever been in has been just severely toxic. I've never found a woman that just wanted something out of life and wanted to be happy. Never found that. Never. Have I found a woman that wanted to work together as a team and have something. I mean Heather did but they killed her. So 
on top of all that drama, I, I can I can name a thousand things that they've done. I'll just I'll just start with yes the, this morning. I'll just tell you what I can remember because it's so much stuff that they've done to me that I can't even remember, can't even recall. Woke up this morning, clock went off. I haven't been sleeping very much at all. You know they love to take your sleep from you. So 4:45, the clock goes off. I'm awake at 4:30 because my other half likes to wake me up when she leaves every morning. Not a, hey, honey, I love you, but I'm, I'm going to work, or she's just slamming doors, just being as loud as possibly can. And that's that's a technique, that's a torture technique that they've done to Guantanamo prisoners and the J6 prisoners. They won't let you sleep, that way you're always on edge, where you don't have the, enough time for your mind to rest. And it takes a heavy toll, just insomnia will take a heavy toll. You add on top of that direct energy weapons that they fry me with, man, I'm just, I'm just, ready I'm, I'm past crack wake up this morning four o'clock 4 30 when she goes to work i'm like okay well i gotta get ready i gotta get my stuff out of the dang out, out of the dryer my, my hunting clothes i hand wash them i'm gonna try to remember everything i get up and i get my gun and i'm like well i gotta load my gun well i want to clean it first so i start cleaning the gun and i break the tip off in the gun i pull that out get that fixed i get the gun apart pull the breech plug out and the breech plug is a little dirty because I shot last night at a hologram I'll tell you that in a second so the breech plug is dirty so I'm trying to get the breech plug cleaned out so I take a q-tip thinking I can just barely push the q-tip inside the breech plug and knock some of the old used powder out and then the q then the then the, the toothpick gets stuck inside the breech plug Tried to burn out with a lighter. A lighter didn't work, so I go to the gas grill. Stand in front of the gas grill for 15 minutes trying to burn the toothpick out. Finally get it burned out, and I thought that I'd turn the gas grill off, and I'd just walk away. Go back inside. I break another one of my tools trying to put the bullet in my ramrod. Not the rod itself, but the, the ball you, you hold when you're... If you know black powder, you know what I mean. It's the ball that's got the stick on it. You ram, you get your uh, bullet started with. I broke that. Then I tried to ram the bullet in and I broke another tip off. So two or three things I broke this morning. Finally leave, I get up in the stand at about 5.40. And normally I like to be in the stand by 5.15. Get in the stand and I'm just loud as I can be. I can't focus, I can't. And see I'm being chased down the mountain, all these people behind me. There's never anybody behind me on this road, ever. I'm always by myself, <laughs> always. And there's the drone straight ahead right in the middle of you so sit in the stand nothing comes out nothing at all um and i can elaborate on a little hunting experience from last night i get up in the stand yesterday afternoon pretty early feeling confident getting about three two thirty i got the stand yesterday which is great that's a great time sit there all day till almost dark and i see it see a little day walk up just as quietly pitter pat I text my daughter, uh, she's at the hospital, so I, I text her and as soon as I put the phone in my pocket, I hear a little doe. And she walked right up underneath my stand and stands there on the other side. I always face the tree instead of face out from the tree when I'm in my stand because I don't like, I like heights. So this little doe stands underneath my stand for, it seemed like five, five minutes. <coughs> it was probably two or three minutes. So when she turns around, I get my gun, get it up, I get it trained on her. She's in, she's in, <coughs> she's in front of one little tree. So I give her a second to move, and she moves. And when she does, I recalibrate my shot, and I squeeze the trigger, and the gun goes boom. And there was nothing there. I shot at a deer. Saw it in the scope, and there was absolutely nothing there at all. No blood, no deer, no ground roughed up, nothing. And when I, when I say I, that I shot at it and it was there, but it wasn't there, it's the fourth deer that I've shot at this year, and nothing happened. First deer I shot with a crossbow. No, I, yeah, I shot with my crossbow. Not my crossbow because the first day of crossbow season, my buddy came down to the house and I was, we were sighting in my crossbow. And he said, "Hey, let's change your bolt." So he sands my bolt down, the the knock on my bolt, 
first day of archery season, and he break and and when I go to shoot it, it breaks my string. Strings for crossbows, just you just don't go to the store and buy them. You have to order them, or you have to have one made. He says, "Well, good thing that didn't happen in the tree." I said, "It wouldn't have happened at all if I had just used the knocks that I was using instead of using yours, doing what you wanted to do." So I called the guy at the bow shop and said, "Hey, man, I'm down. I got to get this going. I need to feed my family." He said, "Oh, great, man, no problem." He said, "Why don't you bring it tomorrow night at seven o'clock, and I'll get right on it." I said, "Great, man." So I haul ass down there the next day at seven o'clock. And I handed it to him. He said, hey, man. He said, great. He said, I'll get that done. Call me in about two weeks. And I'm like, what? You, you told me you were going to make room to get me in, and now it's going to be two weeks. So I lost two weeks of bow season. I had to use an inadequate. I had to use a bow that's 30 years old. That was the first one I shot. I shot a bow at a, at a new property. Shot a doe. Rolled it. And I went down in the woods to find it, and there wasn't a blood trail anywhere. The deer disappeared. I know I hit it. I saw it roll. Couldn't find the arrow. Couldn't find the deer. Couldn't find any sign that that deer had existed whatsoever. Yet, I've got it on camera a hundred times. Another time I'm up in the stand at that property... Got a six-pointer in range at about 30 yards. I'm up in my stand. Everything is perfect. Slow motion. I'm on that deer. I'm trained on his shoulder for about 35, 40 seconds. I'm trained on his shoulder. Dead on, he's going to drop. And I pull the trigger, and my gun goes, bloop. Nothing. The only thing that, that came out of the bullet came out and it hit the ground probably 10 feet away. Just still to this day, don't know why it malfunctioned. Don't know why. So me and my buddy did the same load. We loaded our guns at the same time with that out of the same powder. And he had his gun go poop before as well. I now believe firmly that he's being targeted when he's around me because you know how people say, hey man, you hang out with me every time I'm with you, something breaks in my truck. I ain't going to hang out with you no more. Well, the same thing's going on. Every time he gets around me, he can't kill a deer. We go all the way down to Raleigh to hunt. He thinks he's got his gun fixed and I didn't really, I didn't think my gun was messed up. Even though I had a ploop last night, last year, I had the same problem on, on a, I think on a deer. Last year, my gun went ploop. This year it went ploop. So we get down to Raleigh, and I this I'm sitting in a deer stand. He's about 100 yards to my left, and this doe comes breaking across the field, wide open. She's running every jump she takes. She falls and slides and falls and slides, and I can't get my gun on her fast enough. And then my buddy's words came in my head. I remember what he said. He said, "If the doe comes out first, the buck's on the way." So I just ease back over. Got my gun out front in front of me, and here comes this buck, and he is an absolute beast. He runs. He takes three steps, three three runs, three hops, and he's in the middle of a 50-yard field. I, I ain't joking. Three hops, and he made 25 yards. So I go, hey! Hey! And he stops in his tracks because he, he, he's running. He's trying to get that other deer. He stops in his tracks. And when I when I when I'm when I'm sighting in, I, I rotate my gun until I can find him. I rotate one turn. I rotate one more half turn, and he's dead in my sights, dead on his shoulder. And he's looking around trying to find out where that noise came from. Now the deer in Raleigh are massive. They're like twice the size of the deer that's up here where I live at. This deer looked like he had the color of a beige. And see, the drone's straight in front of me again. And that's probably to my east. That's probably pointing east right in front of me again. It's the back right of my house. He comes out and he is an absolute stud. You can see the muscles in his shoulders. He is a monster. Now, the day before when we were, we were scoping and tracking, we were trying to get up, trying to figure out where we were going to go. We found a track 
bigger than my hand. That's how big that track was. And for me and my buddy talk, we, we, we pretty much determined it was this deer that laid that track because he was so massive. But when he came out, he had a perfect six point rack. It went straight up, straight up the sides of his, just like a flat top to cut when, when, when the black boys back when back in the eighties and nineties, like kid and play had that real tall box. That's that's how these the horns looked. They were perfect. This was an absolute perfect specimen of the deer. Perfect. I mean I pull the trigger and the gun goes bloop. Nothing. But the doe runs to my buddy a hundred yards away, ran all the way around the field and goes right down the trail that he had just cut the day earlier to get in there. Gets underneath his dish stand. He pulls the trigger, finally stops right there at him, 10 yards from him, and his gun goes, ploop. Nothing. Just pushes the bullet out the end, and that was it. Still in front of me. Just an absolute nightmare. And then last night, I got this day with my sights. And the gun actually worked, except now the deer disappeared. It was absolutely invisible. There was nothing there. Nothing there. So the weapons and the psychological abuse are worse than ever. I'll decide. I've, I've made three videos so far, and haven't posted one yet and don't know if I'm going to post this but I may anyway see what's swollen up life has not been easy oh yeah by the way when I got back home today I walked by my gas grill and it was left on all a whole tank it was left on all day long and I remember turning it off I remember turning it off and shutting the lid the grill was on and still just barely running Now I'm back to hell. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, same phone problems. Had the uh, charge port screwed up. I took it to get it fixed, and then I lose all service. You saw like I did last time. It works only when I'm at home under Wi-Fi. That's the only time I can receive calls. The only time I can call out. The only time I can do anything with it is when I'm around on Wi-Fi. And the guys at the phone place said, oh, no, it works, buddy. See, that's, you, you got a setting wrong. You got the, the, the roaming on it wrong. So I clicked the button. It worked now. So I clicked the button. I was like, oh, man, it's going to work. He said, the LTE, the LTE has to be lit up. LTE. I said, okay. So I get down the road, and I'm talking on the phone, and I'm like two two miles away from the phone store that I'm hooked up to their Wi-Fi, and it stops working. They vandalized that thing. Everything's being destroyed around me, and I can't do nothing about it. God, I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I'm so absolutely tired. Above and beyond all that, I'm a grandpa now. I have a grandson who was born 22 weeks. 22 weeks old. He was barely, he wasn't even a pound, I don't think, when he was born. So he's been in, in the NICU ever since he was born. 75 days he's been in, in the intensive care for children. So that's been weighing heavily on me and my daughter especially. I would ask for your prayers, but I just don't know anymore. I just don't know anymore. I'm really discouraged. My pastor is acting like an idiot, and I don't, I don't want to lose my church. But he's just, it's too much. God, I'm in pain. Anyway, there's your update.